This tutorial will demonstrate how to design a range of different anterior deprogrammer splints. Whether your patient needs a minimalist NTI style splint, a directive appliance with a guiding ramp, or a classic AMPSA, this tutorial will demonstrate how to design these occlusal splints. Now, of course, the Blue Sky Plan software is free to download and install as many computers as you like. And exporting the splint after it's been completely designed, reviewed, and approved starts at just $6 per case. Now, of course, designing and manufacturing in-house is your fastest and cheapest option. But if you would like to outsource your case and have the work done for you, simply go to labpronto.com, scroll down to occlusal guards, click on occlusal guards, and go ahead and place your order. We're going to review the process using the new Blue Sky Plan software. This is version 5.0.27. So if you're using something older, then go to our blueskybio.com website and download the latest version. We're going to select the option for splint. Here we see we have two different workflows. We have an occlusal bite splint and we have an incisal AMPSA splint, which is going to be the focus of this tutorial. So I'm going to click once to start the process. Now I could proceed directly to selecting the relevant jaw type if I like to associate the case with a particular patient to enable searching by the relevant data and better organization. I'm going to click on existing patient in this situation. I'll select one of the patients that I have on the list already, sky blue. If I wanted to create a new patient, select the option here to complete the basic information. We see that on the bottom, we have the blue sky incisal splint treatment already created and selected. So I could go ahead and proceed to selecting the upper arch. Before proceeding to import data, let's just take a look at some of these workflow settings that we have right here. We have default settings for the splint, for the splint minimal thickness, the offset or the distance between the splint and the jaw, the cusp tips radius, which is essentially if you're designing the splint based on the shape of the tooth, then it's the radius of the cusp tips. A higher number will have a rounder contour to the splint. We have the default open height for the articulator and the ramp angle if we're creating an angled splint. Click workflow settings again to collapse the settings. If we like to make any changes, that could be done just by grabbing and dragging any of the values, the left, right arrows, or simply left click and then type in the desired value and press enter. We're going to click on next to proceed to data import. The software automatically brings up the dialog box with our computer's files. We have the shortcut buttons going across the top that you could use for quick access. Navigate to the location of the relevant files and you could left click on the first file, hold down the shift key, and left click on the last file to select all the files in between or hold down the control button to select individual files. The idea at this point is we want to import all relevant optical scans, STL files, PLY files, whatever it is, OBJ, we could go ahead, select them and then go ahead and click on OK. Now the software automatically categorizes the different file types. We have our maxilla, mandible, and in our situation, we have imported two byte scans and we could see everything in the preview on the right side of the screen. We could toggle the visibility of each individual file on and off and delete an individual file if we've imported the incorrect one or click remove all to remove everything. Now this is an intelligent data import screen, meaning that the flow that's going to come next is based on the files that we've imported. So if we've imported the buckle byte, then it will run automatically the jaw alignment. If this isn't necessary and the files are already aligned, we could go ahead and delete the relevant files or we could keep them there and just have the software run the alignment. So we've selected all the relevant files. So let's go ahead and click on next. Let's align the files correctly in space by following the diagram on the left side of the screen. Hold down the shift key, left click once with your mouse button to place a node in the indicated location. And we're placing three dots in order to create a horizontal plane to align the models correctly. 
We have the widget on screen. If we need to do any modifications, we could use the widget on screen to change the alignment or placement. Assuming everything is aligned properly and reflects the positioning of the head on the bottom left, let's go ahead and click on Next. So we could see now that the software is registering the models based on the buckle bytes. And again, that's because we've imported the buckle byte files. So the software is running that functionality automatically. If we import different bytes at different mandible positions, we could go ahead and use the functionality on the left side of the screen to move the mandible from position to position. I'm going to go ahead and click on next. And we're going to be placing a jaw articulator by holding down the shift key and left clicking once as indicated in the image on the top left of the screen. We now see that the articulator has been added to the scene. We have advanced settings where you can go ahead and modify the different properties of the articulator. We also have option to open and close the jaw. You could change the opening accordingly by dragging the slider, the left mouse arrows, or by typing the desired value directly on screen. Now, just a word about different visibility settings. If you right click on a model, you have different options to hide toggle transparency and to show high dimensions. If you left click on a model, it becomes the active model and you have the different options when you right click. We also have a visibility panel that shows up on the top left of the screen over here. And you have different options in terms of transparency, visibility, modifying the color, and show height of different surfaces and grids, articulators, and different options here. Let's go ahead and click on Next. Let's define our insertion direction. We have two options how to do that, either based on the arrow that we see on the screen or based on the orientation from the view. And we have the option here regarding allowed undercuts. If you would like to remove undercuts completely, the option should be set to zero as it is now. If you would like to allow some undercuts, you could go ahead and update the value accordingly. And we'll go ahead and click on Next. So we're now up to the step to add the interior deprogrammer. And again, we selected the flow for a AMPSA type splint with an interior deprogrammer. If we just wanted an occlusal splint without one, then we would have selected the second flow at the beginning of the process. I'm going to click Add Anterior Deprogrammer, and we could see that it shows up on screen. Now, this is already aligned, properly positioned horizontally between our two front teeth. We have different options on the left side in terms of the measurements. We can also modify just by simply left clicking, and we have our different dimension properties with the measurements visible on screen. So, if we wanted to increase the height, we could go ahead and do that directly on screen. Same with the width and other properties. We could also right click and choose toggle dimensions. And we could see in real time all of our dimensions as we go ahead and make any modifications. Now a single click brought up our resize tools. If we double click, then we have our movement widget. If we wanted to change the angle or the positioning or the placement, we could go ahead and do that directly using that movement widget. Once we finalize the dimensions and the placement of the interior deprogrammer, we're going to go ahead and click on next. Okay, now we're going to draw a curve for our splint. Hold down the shift key and just use your left mouse button to place nodes indicating the arch. When you wanna rotate or zoom in, zoom out, let go of the shift key and use your mouse buttons to proceed to indicate the curve, continue, hold down the shift key. Every time that you wanna place a node, just hold down that shift key. Now go ahead and draw the curve. You wanna go ahead and close the curve accordingly. Here we go, we could review and modify any of the nodes positions as needed. And once we're happy with that positioning, we're going to go ahead and click on Next. 
Now we have different design options on the left side of the screen. So maybe our simplest option is this option right here, which is just minimal thickness. So if we want it to be 1.5 millimeters thick, we could use the indication here and we see a preview on the screen. Now this preview is a real time, but a very rough preview. When we go ahead and proceed, then we'll see the actual preview prior to export. But what this does is if I go ahead and make any modifications, let's say I want to see, I just want to see in real time how it's going to look. If it's a bit thicker, then we could go ahead and make the changes and it will update immediately on the screen showing the preview. Now we have different options. So what I just mentioned is the minimal thickness. We have an option. Let's go ahead to raise the splint to a visualized plane. So here's our plane. We could rotate also based on the head and the bottom. Now, if we wanted the plane to be a little bit higher or a little bit lower, we could just double click to activate the widget and just drag that accordingly. So in our situation here, our minimal thickness is 1.5. Let's go ahead and move the interior deprogrammer a little bit. Okay. And again, we could see from the live rough update estimation exactly how different things look and how they will work together. Okay, so this is a good option. If we wanted just to demonstrate the plane functionality, let's double click. Let's just exaggerate this so you can see how it works. And here it updates automatically. Okay, we have additional options if you wanted to create a ramp. So you could design the splint and change the plane and place it on an angle. Our default angle, our default angulation is 0.15 millimeters, but we could change it using the widget or by typing in the value on screen and it will update accordingly. We also do have the option of designing the splint based on the antagonist cusp tips if that's relevant for the type of splint that you are designing. Let's go ahead and revert back to the option of based on minimal thickness, change this back to 1.5. And here is our design splint with our anterior deprogrammer. Let's go ahead and click on next, see how it looks on screen prior to export. And we can make any final modifications prior to exporting the splint. Okay, so here we go. Here's our splint with our anterior deprogrammer. If we just wanted to do a minimalistic design without the splint, we could have just clicked next on the draw curve step and just proceeded without designing the entire splint. Now we have some different visibility options. If we wanted to see the collisions based on the opposing arch positioning, we could toggle on and off the collisions. We have some quick access options here. So if we wanted to use the articulator opening functionality and see how the jaw moves based on our splint, we could go ahead and do so and how the collisions will look. We have the ability to use some measurement tools and note taking tools, as well as taking screenshots and adding them to the basket for saving those images. To go ahead and export our design splint. So I clicked on next. We're proceeding to the export stage. We have the relevant surface selected by default. If we wanted to select and export additional surfaces together with the splint, we could go ahead and do that. We could see our export cost is half of an export and our format we could export as OBJ or as an STL file. If we do select multiple surfaces to export, we have export as separate files. So it will save them to the same folder. If we wanted to export them as a merged file, then we could uncheck that checkbox. Once we've completed the proper settings, we're gonna go ahead and click on the export button. Select a location on your computer where you would like to save the exported splint.